Hi again folks, in this video, will the Sabres move up in the draft or attempt to? Let's look at it, coming up. Alright, I've done a project here. Guys, you'll forgive me, I'm sweating again, but uh, I am feeling better. I feel like 90%, so I have the energy to do videos this long, you know. Uh, that means I've got my energy coming, so that's good, finally. Look, can the Sabres or will the Sabres, I should say, will they look at the possibility of moving up in the draft? Are they going to make an attempt? So let's do a thing here. We're going to look at from the years 2010 to 2017. I wanted to go at least five years ago, okay? It, it, I even fought with maybe four years ago, but with COVID and everything, and there wasn't many games played, and, you know, there's a whole bunch of reasons. So I, I just, I put the stop-off point at 2017, which kind of makes sense. And I started it at 2010. What we're going to do is we're going to look at these drafts. We're going to look at the number 9, 16, 28 picks. Would we trade them for one of the top five? And let's look at this as an ex just an experiment. I wouldn't trade. I'll say it right now. I would not trade our three draft picks to get into the top five. I just wouldn't. Not this draft. If it was next year's, I'd be tempted because, uh, because of Connor Bedard. Tell you right now so let's take a look at this let me scroll back over here and we will turn back the clock and go to 2010 here we go all right so coming in at number nine was uh michael grandlin if you look or i should say mikhail really mikhail grandlin and uh he is number nine in this draft number 16 vladimir tarasenko and number 28, uh, Charlie Coyle. So these were three picks, all had good careers. And would you trade those three guys, if we had them, in the prime of their careers, you know, or uh, knowing what they were going to become, especially a guy like Tarasenko, would you trade them for Taylor Hall, Tyler Sagan, God, Eric Gudbertson, Ryan Johansson, or Nino Niederreiter? Would we actually trade any of those top, for the, any of those top five? And my answer, guys, would be no. No. <laughs> so there is an example right there where I, I just don't see the logic there, you know? If we were going to get, if we, you know, and th the thing is, I didn't even want to throw in the number one picks in this, but we're going to do it just for fun. But there you go. There's number 9, 16, 28. All had good careers. All right. So we're kind of one for one, I would say, in that department. Let's look at the next one. Here's 2011. Number 9, Dougie Hamilton. Number 16, Joel Armia, drafted by us. And who is actually, you know, was uh, pretty much liked here in Montreal. And uh, 28, Zach Phillips, who never played an NHL game. So... Knowing what we know, would we trade Armia and Dougie Hamilton for Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Gabriel Landeskog, Jonathan Hubido, Adam Larson, or Ryan Strom? I guess we could argue for Gabriel Landeskog, right? We probably could argue, but, you know, given, you know, what Dougie Hamilton turned into, I I'd still would have to probably, probably say... This would be a maybe because we know that 28 was a bust and Joel Armia didn't really turn out to be that big of, of a player. So really, Dougie Hamilton, it would be like straight up for uh, uh, Huberto or Landeskog. I'd have to say yes in this draft. Yeah, actually, looking at it from that angle. Let's go to 2012. Okay, number nine, Jacob Truba. Number 16, Tom Wilson. And number 28, Brady Shea. Would we trade, uh, who's, uh, who have all had good careers, no doubt, for anybody, would we actually trade these three for Yakupov, Murray, Galchenyuk, Reinhardt, Griffin Reinhardt, or Morgan Riley? No. No. See, for this, the three for one for the top five wouldn't be worth it. It just wouldn't be worth it. You know, Truba's all of a sudden, I, yes, I know his cap, it was crazy, but we've seen this playoff, just what a beast he became, right? 
And then you had, you know, 16, Tom Wilson, you know, and also even uh, uh, Brady Shea turned out to be a pretty good player. So I'd, ha I'd have to say for this one, no, absolutely no. So we're two and one there. It's probably going to be about half, guys. Might be, maybe a little less. I don't even know. I'm just trying it now. So two for one stands the no. Let's go to 2013. Okay, number nine, Bolharv, uh, Bolharvat. Number 16, Nikita Zadorov. And number 28, a Morgan Klimchuk, who played one NHL game. So, we know Klimchuk didn't pan out. Zadorov did. And Bolharvat pretty much did also. But will we trade him for Nathan McKinnon or Alexander Barkov? We can stop right there and say absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, no doubt. So that worked out there. That's two and two. And uh, but you could see still the nine and sixteen. It's pretty consistent. Good careers, right? So far. All right, guys. Two thousand fourteen. Don't forget, we're going to two thousand seventeen. Two thousand fourteen. All right, number nine, Nikolai Ehlers, and he has carved out a pretty nice career. Number sixteen. Sonny Milano, who I can't remember the last time he played. I, I, I'd have to check, actually, uh, on that. And number 28, Josh Hosang, who you might recall in that draft, guys, plummeted. Do you remember he was supposed to be a top 10 pick, and he just kept plummeting before the draft? And look at that. Uh, he, he, even his career didn't turn out. So these guys, uh, w would we trade any of them for Aaron Eckblad, Simon Reinhardt, Leon Dreisaitl? Yes, absolutely for Dreisaitl. See, a three for one would work there. You see, this is what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to make because a lot of Sabres fans feel what we should trade up. Well, they could be right too. Okay, 2015, here we go. Our favorite draft with our buddy Jack Eichel. All right, let's look at number nine, Timo Meyer. Uh, pretty decent career. And then we got number 16, Matthew, Matthew Barzell. Yeah, funny, eh? You look, only in 91 career goals. You would think he had more, but you got to remember, look, he, you know, he's only played so many games. Matthew Barzell. And number 28, who I'd love the Sabres to get their hands on, is Anthony Bovillier. So th those three guys there. Will we trade any of them for Connor McDavid? <laughs> I think we could stop the video right there. Yeah, I think we would. <laughs> uh, would I trade those three guys, though? Let me open it again for Jack Eichel. Timo Meyer, Matthew Barzell, and Bavillier. Hmm. I would, I would probably trade Jack Eichel for Barzell and Bavillier, believe it or not. Okay, moving along. Let's go to 2016. Number nine, Mikhail Sergachev. Number 16, Jacob Chikrin. And number 28, Lucas Johansson, who only played one NHL game. Keep in mind, 2016, there is a chance that Johansson could still play, you know, but he hasn't. Up to this point, he's been a bust. So that means Chikrin and Sergachev, would you trade those two? Any of them for Austin Matthews, Patrick Lanny, Pierre-Luc Dubois, uh, Pujarvi? Look, there's just no way I think we would say no to Austin Matthews we'd have to go for Austin Matthews. Austin Matthews is absolutely the real thing, without a doubt. But these are other guys that turned out pretty damn good, right? And let's go to the last one, 2017. Okay, number nine, Rasmussen, Michael Rasmussen uh, on uh, uh, Detroit's pick. And number 16, uh, Yusuf Valamaki. And 28, sorry guys, I can't see. There it is, Shane Bowers, who I, oh, okay, he hasn't played a game. I was just going to say I haven't heard of. So would we trade any of those guys for Hershire, or Hershire, I should say, and Patrick, Heiskinen, uh, and then we got Kale McCarr. And what we know now of Kale McCarr, I think we'd all say yes. So see, it, it's kind of a tough fit, guys. It is. It's really, it's kind of a tough call if you look at it from the angle of would we trade up, 
You know, sometimes is it worth it? No, but sometimes yes. Like, and Kale McCarr saved that draft, really. I wouldn't probably do it for, you know. Let me just get a quick glimpse again of 9 and 16 again, though. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. Yeah, for Hershire also. Yeah, uh, uh, but Kale McCarr, I mean, that was the, the obvious pick. So looking at it, though, if you look, most of the 9s and 16s have all carved out NHL careers, right? The 28s is where it starts to hit where it's a bust. Sometimes it's a bust. There's a guy that doesn't play a game at all. There's some guys that have played, like, full careers, though. So we're going to have to just let that dictate itself, of course. But would you guys do it? Would you trade up all three of these picks to get in the top five this year? I wouldn't, you know? Now, if it was next year, uh, it would depend if it's before the lottery or not for me. I wouldn't be comfortable trading out three first-rounders for one guy. I just wouldn't, you know? Now, if we traded, let's say, 9 and 28 to get in the top five. That's a whole different game then, you know? But I'm talking all three. That, that's kind of the game I played today looking at this, you know? And overall, it looked like the guys that were 9 and 16 had pretty steady careers every single year, right? Pretty much. Most of these guys have carved out NHL careers. And that's all we can hope, really, guys. When you draft a 9 and 16, you, you hope to get lucky and get the Hall of Famer, of course, but nothing's guaranteed. All right, body says no, gotta go lie down. So that's it, guys. I'm gonna get these videos out to you. You guys uh, hopefully have some, uh, you know, throw your comments in there. Let me know what you think. I, I, you know, would you trade all three of them to get a, a top, the, the top pick this year? I'm talking number one. You know, would you do it to get number one? Something to think about. All right, guys, have a great night. I'll see you soon.